heard of restorative justice or restorative practices? If so, what? The state officials. And initial session goes around focusing on some questions that everybody must answer, like what harm have you experienced? And then the officials leave the room. The two families are to come up with a repair for the harm. And then once the families agree on how to repair the harm, then the officials are brought back in the room. And the officials say, yeah, we can go with this or no, we can't. Okay. In your opinion, of this, is that this is a positive? Oh, this, the statistics are outstanding. In no case has it ever been less than 50% improvement. Why is it? It's just phenomenal. I am very concerned, and it may be that you it's worked very well in your your structure. I've seen it almost as a, an indication or victimizing the victim and the person who's involved. And I've not been extremely happy with the way I've seen it. And, and, and it, 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 in your area, I saw it in a couple of uh, youth service bureaus. I've done it in Connecticut, and I felt that. So maybe it was not done by people who are trained in the practice. It's possible. It's possible. But we have a lot of those types of programs with Bound with where we have these different types of um, things that we've heard and we bring them here to Connecticut. We don't get people necessarily that are trained in it, but we then spend a lot of money like um, multi systemic therapy. Things Turns like out it's very difficult to do. Okay. And training is essential. They are there. I'm glad you But you do have people that are trained and it's not working. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess I'll direct this at Shafiq. I had a question about the, the bicycle, the uh, selective enforcement of the bicycling. Um, and I'm just wondering if you heard anything in the department that seems like they want to stop profiling. Well, I, I'm not too familiar with the. Uh, I would sign with Mike and say, um, and it was other the years that you know a lot of the laws now, particularly in, in fractional laws, they're available on some website. And, you know, you can kind of track them down, and actually see what those infractions are across the street, and different things. In the past, is before the invention of internet, um, you know, we didn't have access. It was very difficult to access this information. Now with internet, you can go in there and you can, you know, put in what are Connecticut state fractions for this and that. And I think it's important to familiarize yourself. If you have a, a young person, I mean, particularly a young male, and you think that they may be subjugated to getting a ticket for riding a bike or a skateboard or different things, then you need to know, okay, well, what is the breakdown? What is the condition of this and how is this working? And the other thing is, too, um, one of the other problems is, when our kids, our relatives come home, we hear a story. We only hear that one story. Then we take that story and we're gone. We're gone with it. This happened, this happened. But I think the important thing is take the story, know what's going on in terms of whatever the infraction or whatever the law that they've been cited for, and then really make contact with somebody that you feel you're going to get the result from. So a perfect example is this. Presidents of companies talk to presidents of companies. Okay, the president of the company doesn't call the doorman. So if you feel that you're not going to get the response you want, don't you know go overboard. Well, I'm going to talk with a particular officer. Wait, talk with the district manager. Their information is available. You know, and then and wait till the next day. So that way, all the heads are calm and you know and collected on it. But I mean, there's specific things. My children don't necessarily ride bikes in the New Haven area, but we go ride bikes on the Farnham Farmington Canal. Put a helmet on. <laughs> you know, and they're like, oh, we gotta wear a helmet. I think you do, but it doesn't really matter because you're wearing one. You know, and I just want to go overboard with it because I don't know when we're on the Farmington Canal if there's gonna be some, you know, the, um, the ranger, park ranger, or somebody there that's gonna be enforcing that, that rule. But I know it's some kind of law and I wanna make sure that I'm covered. And what I'm saying is we have to do the same thing. You know, I know there's been an issue, kids riding bikes on sidewalks and on the street. And we're not really clear. My point is let's get clear on it. Let's get clarity on it and look at exactly what the criterion is. I, I know in some cases that, you know, 
you can't really ride your skateboard down the uh, parts of different private property. We need to know what property, we have to teach our kids what private property is. What's private property and what's not private property? Because with crime up and different things happening, these things will become an issue. Where you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, that's your wrong place at the wrong time. You're on private property and, didn't and nobody never told you this is private property. <coughs> the schools are private property, you know, once the school is closed. The park, it start becoming private property once the sun goes down. When you see that it says posted, no trespassing at sunset or after dark. I mean, we have to educate our kids about that. So they're not kind of stuck facing this whole Miranda you know, issue. Okay, it's, um, it's getting really late. It's like 20 minutes and we have like 10 minutes to clean up. So we only have 10 minutes left. So what I'd like to do is we have some um, little something for our speakers. <laughs> no, can I just make a comment about it? Oh, sure, you can talk on this. Yeah, the uh, discussion on uh, the, the question uh, was twofold. Uh, because one, it dealt with the infraction of the bicycle, and the other one was the racial profiling uh, component that needs to be addressed. Uh, again, this, uh, and it may sound as if I'm fixated on this gentleman, but it's the truth. The, uh, the mayor of this town appoints individuals to that board of police commissioners, which I think is one of the most powerful boards in the city of New York, outside the board of education. Mm -hmm. so it, it's a powerful, powerful board because it controls the hiring and firing of police officers in this city. And there's never been a person like Barbara Fair appointed to that board. They dare not appoint me to the board because I can guarantee you this, that the, the, the direction of the police department will change overnight because we have to put an end to how uh, our community is, is policed in the way that it's being policed. Is there racial profiling? You better believe there's racial profiling going on out here, not just regarding bicycles. It's a whole lot of crap that's going down, and it's controlled. We can control it through the Board of Police Commission. But if we don't rally around the issue and confront this individual, and better yet, just vote him out of power, because the power that he has amassed, and I, I, I think all this stuff begins at the top. And if we continue to allow this individual to serve in his capacity, things are only going to get worse. And am I fixated about removing him? You better believe I am. I think he is one of the worst things that happened to this to this city. And he has, as far as I'm concerned, has no respect for the African American community. Because if he had the respect that I think he should have, you wouldn't see the degree of police misconduct going on in our community the way it does. Right. And it starts at the top, ladies and gentlemen. The chief of the mayor. The mayor. Okay, um, we want to start first because we want to make sure. Uh, so, uh, can we start with your presentation and then we'll have some people there? Sir, my question to you is why don't you run in 2011? I'll consider it. Please do. Okay. And then I'm going to be right here. I'll be there with Bill. Okay. Please do. I hear a lot of talk. I want to honor what he runs. Before me, I want to present SPAI, present the speakers with these awards from the Brother Sir for promoting community of peace. for representing our families up in Hartford. For attorney Mike Jefferson. For your courage in fighting injustice.
Last one, Brother Gary. Last one, representing our families in Hartford. All right. This is a special award that we have for Miss Melinda Tupis. relative to this department, including one in May 2010, in which a former commander of detectives is now on trial for his role in the torture of over 100 African Americans who later confessed to crimes that they didn't commit. One served up to 34 years before being released. He's on trial now. January 2010, the Office of Professional Standards was under fire following the shooting of a 13-year-old girl that is being questioned. September 2009, four former officers in charge of special operations are involved in drug and gun scandals. 2008, major police corruption probe underway in which members of the elite tactical unit involved in guns, drugs, robberies, home invasions. 2003, one detective and two tactical officers involved in the incident in which seven kilos of cocaine and a gun was stolen from an impounded car. The drugs were split between the between the three, and five kilos were sold along with the gun. The person that was driving the car was later found murdered. The other two kilos was placed in the car of another person, and that person was charged with possession of cocaine, just a few items, talk about background checks, why did New Haven hire from a partner with so much scandal? Congratulations to our mayor. <laughs> That's the punchline. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to do the raffle so we can wrap this up. I hope everyone felt it was worthwhile coming out today. Um, and I'm, and you, you need to go on Mike Jefferson's website. Mike Jefferson makes me feel like I don't know nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. I feel like I have a clean slate up here. So you need to go on his website. And what is it, Mike? KiyamaMovement.com. Kiyama. Kiyama. K I. It's right at the bottom. K I Y A M A Movement. And if you want to know anything, Kiyama curriculum.